Hello, my friends. Today, we're going to watch a little bit of the cross-examination of Jennifer McCabe in the Karen Reed trial. And we're going to pay a close attention to her body language. Let's get started. You said just a few minutes ago about not knowing what she was saying. I could just hear voices. That was a lie. It was. Objection. Sustained. And a couple of seconds later, Nicole Albert responds one word. What was her response? Good. So in order, those texts say, you listening? You say, you listening? Objection, Your Honor. The, the objection sustained. At the end of the day, you were eavesdropping on an interview that Terry Roberts was having with law enforcement in their official capacity, weren't you? No, I was sitting eating dinner, and some of the things, obviously, I overheard, but I was so not eavesdropping. I'm saying... There's a possibility if I'm sitting in this room eating dinner and someone's in another room talking, you can hear bits and pieces. Was I eavesdropping? No. Is there some big cover-up story? No. Well, why, Ms. McCabe, does your story, does your testimony keep evolving? A second ago, you said, you told this jury, you said, I couldn't hear a thing. All I could hear was voices, like muffled voices from the other room. She was going on and on about something. Yeah. And then when I confronted you with a text message where you said, She's telling them everything. Now it's, well, I may have heard a couple of things. Which is it? No, she was going on and on and on like she does. And you were listening on and on and on like you do. Ha ha ha. So that is a nice place for us to get started, right? It's unbelievable, unbelievable how her body language is so... Uh, impressive and so strong in this trial right just in this little clip that we watched <laughs> with uh, her and the attorney allen she's she's showing an extreme amount of um, excessive blinking which usually is a sign of anxiety uh she has the lip licking going on which um, a lot of books about body language indicate also could be a sign of anxiety because when we get stressed, our mouths get dried. So she's trying to like, you know, lick her lips to either pacify herself or to bring saliva. And when he hits this point that aggravates her, her right hand goes up, her whole body goes from being uh, having a nice posture to going uh, forward like this almost as a confrontational invitation like let's fight let's fight bro that's not what i'm saying and and her whole demeanor changes before she even goes to the uh forward she takes a deep breath so let's watch that one more time i'm going to try to make it just a few a little bit not too much let's see you can hear bits and pieces. Was I eavesdropping? No. Is there some big cover-up story? She's going to take a deep story? breath and move no. forward. Well, Watch that. Cave, does your story, does your testimony keep evolving? A second ago, you said, you told this jury, you said, I couldn't hear a thing. All I could hear was voices, like muffled voices from the other room. She was going on and on about something. Yeah. And then when I confronted you with a text message where you said, she's telling them everything. Now it's, well, I may have heard a couple of things. Which is it? No, she was going on and on and on like she does. And you were listening on and on and on like you do. I was probably hearing bits and pieces. Wait, I think it was before this. Let me try 36. Listen, I could hear voices. You could hear her interview. She is telling them everything. Yes. End quote. Correct? Mm -hmm. Lip yes. licking, teeth. So Look at all that. a few minutes ago about not knowing what she was saying. I could just hear voices. That was a lie. Wait, it was. Check. Okay. She's so annoyed. Look at look at her look up. She's like rolling her eyes. <sighs> and a couple of seconds later, Nicole Albert responds. What was her response? Good. 
Good. Okay, now she's going to do the breathing and the moving forward thing. But she's trying to stay calm. So in order, those texts say, you listening? You say, you listening? Objection, Your Honor. The, the objection. Look at her eye, the side eye to the prosecutor. At the end of the day. And then the squinting of the eyes. Carrie Roberts was having the law enforcement in their official capacity, weren't you? No, I was sitting eating dinner, and some of the things, obviously, I overheard. But I was so not even saying, I'm oh, saying there there's go. a possibility if I'm sitting Whoa. in this room eating dinner and All someone's right. in another room talking, you can hear bits and pieces. Was I eavesdropping? Now she's showing her real face. Now she's showing her real reactions, her character. I don't know this lady. I don't know if this lady is lying or not. All I can tell you is that by watching her, I felt uh, an excessive amount of anger and passive aggressiveness. And at the end, even manipulation. And I don't know. I don't know what the facts are. I don't know who's telling the truth. I'm just saying this is the feeling I got. I was like, oh, like as she looked at the jur the jurors, the jurors, <laughs> as she looked at them and as she she responded like her mannerisms, her, her whole demeanor. I felt uneasy. Like this lady is just, I'm not even going to get into all the things that I thought, but so this is one of the, the slides that I created and let's go from the beginning. This is the first one where Alan is saying what well, we just watched and you were listening to the conversation on and on like you do because she uh, uh, she has this habit at least i think three times that i can count that she says something derogatory about her friend carrie roberts right she say she talks a lot she's blunt unlike me and that's a way to um you know bring herself up and putting other people down so it's like an ego thing which is very common in a narcissist, right? A narcissist needs to have their ego high. They need to have control of everything. They need to manipulate. I don't know if she's a narcissist or not. I just noticed that she likes to put this lady, who I don't know, Carrie Roberts, down because she says these things about her. You know, this is this is not the way you talk about somebody, right? She was going on and on like she does. This is derogatory. It's not nice. So I noticed that. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, then this is how she started, right? Her posture is erect. She is calm and serious looking at him. A few moments later, just take a look at her body language. These are her faces. Ah! Ah! looking at him like i'm gonna kill you later or the teeth of anger and then this face like oh, if i could put my hands on you and she even says this phrase there's nothing evil here like there's nothing for you to be you know watching or or anything like that so i'm going to start we're just going to watch a few minutes, but we're going to start around. We're watching from Court TV uh, about three hours and 10 minutes in because this is where I could find a lot of stuff with her body language. Okay, let's do 310 and we'll go from there. You saw a bunch of calls on John O'Keefe's phone, right? You know, he couldn't have deleted them. He passed away, right? Correct. You saw... Your cell phone extraction, which is the handshake, for John O'Keefe's phone, and all of your calls are missing, right? Objection. Objection. Can you can you answer that question? I'm confused. That paper, I don't understand. She it. starts it was talking big. to the judge, like uh, I don't know the phone. The phone calls were deleted, judge. I don't want to answer that. There were numbers. There were calls everywhere. There was a number of missing calls. There's a bunch of missing calls, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't see any of the calls that were reflected on John O'Keefe's phone. Is that right? Yes or no? 
They're not there. A lot of calls are missing. I'm not really even sure what's there because the numbers are all, it's all redacted. So the, the, you were not seeing. So I'm going to say something here. I don't know if anybody else thinks that or not. Not only on this specific example, okay, but certain things that she does that created this passive aggressive manipulator image in my head are she sometimes she doesn't understand, but a lot of times she pretends she doesn't understand and she she, she oh it's irritating to me because he's saying uh we got the person who is deceased. We got the victim's phone. We looked at his phone records and there were like a bunch of missed calls from you. We looked at your phone and they were not there. How come? And she's like, well, there's a lot of phone numbers here. Can I see the report? I don't understand this report. Come on. Like pretending that you're dumb. Are you dumb, Mrs. McCabe? Or you just, you don't get the question? Any redacted calls, Ms. Uh, the page you just had in front of me was redacted. Doesn't matter. Did you delete the phone calls? It's now an exhibit. Now Did an you exhibit. delete the it? Personal information was redacted. None of the calls were redacted now. The numbers. I don't know people's phone numbers. Oh, yeah. I just okay. have the What does contacts. that have to do with anything, lady? Did you delete the phone calls? A ago and I, we could do this all day long. Yeah, we could do this all simple. day the long. The fact of the matter is that report did not show any of the calls that John O'Keefe's phone report showed, correct? From 1214, 1250. I believe there was one on there. 552. That's mm -hmm. the next morning, ma'am. Right? She's, dri she's trying to drive time crazy. Period on it's like a gaslighting. You just said there was a gaslighting to try to make I've somebody told you else that that feel like they're crazy. Right report was extremely hard to read. Right. Mm -hmm. The fact is, Did there you are no the phone calls, calls on your own phone extraction between you and John O'Keefe between 1214 and 1250. Would you just agree with that? At least on that report. Would you just please Direction agree with no. something? Sustained. And Lolly today, the, the is, prosecutor just seems so down like usually his voice is a little bit different he's just like 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 he's given up or something i don't know lolly wake up lollipop wake up that you deleted your call record before you turned your phone in didn't you miss mckay that's what that report shows absolutely not you sanitized your phone because you didn't want the police to know who you had been calling or the fact that you had been calling john o'keefe's phone incessantly correct Incorrect. I willingly turned over my phone. After you deleted your phone call logs, correct? Absolutely not. What date did you turn your phone over? And then she gives the jury these looks. She'd be like, Abs hold on, let me make myself again. She'd be like, absolutely not. Possibly February 3rd. What? Three days after this incident was that? <laughs> Four, five. So you had plenty of time to talk to that friends and family group and ultimately decide to delete your phone calls. Correct? Josh. Sistine. She does a lot of this. Lip licking and uh, mouth grooming. Mouth grooming could be uh, could could be could mean a pacifier, meaning uh, you're kind of anxious. You're sitting on a chair. Everybody's looking at you. You can't really like move. You can't, you know, do anything. So what you have control over is like your mouth. You can move your tongue around, and that's a way to calm yourself down to pacify your nervous system. Right. That's one thing. Another thing that the tongue is known for is to be kind of like a cleanser uh, after you've gone over a difficult subject, right? You have been asked and grilled about something that you're uncomfortable with. And after you finalize that answer and you kind of like, oh, I got away with that or I'm good with this answer, you kind of do the tongue movement as a like a cleanser, like, okay, now I can go to the next step. So we're going to notice that she does that a lot. Okay. I'm just pointing it out because we're going to notice that she does that a lot. So 
back to this one here where uh, I was talking about the feeling she gives me as far as being manipulative and uh, kind of like passive aggressive, right? These are some things that she does a lot. She's like, would you like to explain it? When he asks her a question, on this day, did you do this? Or is it correct that you texted this? She's like, would you like to explain it? Another thing is she keeps asking him for the records. He doesn't have to give her the records, but he she keeps asking him, can I see what you're looking at? Because I don't know, she wants to get in front of it, right? This is a type of control because even when he is grilling her on the fact that she had this off the records, off the books meeting with the investigator that she didn't disclose to anybody. So the, she didn't disclose to the defense, to anybody that she had this meeting. And she wanted to know what is the information the defense has about me. I want to get in front of it. So I want to know what's going on. So it's type of a, it's a type of a control. Uh, she has this control thing that she is displaying through her actions and when she says this to the defense, you can go ahead. It's so passive aggressive. Look at the way she looks at the attorney. Look at the way she looks at the attorney constantly. She's just giving him this stare, you know, and that is one of the reasons why she comes across um, like she's hiding something to me. Okay. This is just in my humble opinion. Now, another thing she does a lot is she keeps asking to see the records uh, and she keeps uh, repeating the question as well. So that gives her time. You know, she pretends she doesn't understand. Uh, she buys a lot of time for herself throughout the whole cross-examination. She constantly asks him to see the records and that's just giving her time to process. She tries to uh, maintain a calm and collected face, but she does lose it a lot of times. And you will see that in this, um, slide here, she had a conversation with the, with the attorney where he was saying, did you see the car outside? Yes. I was looking at the car every three minutes. I texted them. We'll look at the car. Okay. So at that time, did you see a body in the snow, like a big six foot body? She said, no, I wasn't looking down. So he says, okay, so if you're looking at, to the car outside and there was like an alligator in the snow, you wouldn't have seen the alligator, meaning we have our peripheral vision. And she was like, I wasn't looking. I wasn't looking at the floor, right? Even the judge was looking at her like a little bit suspicious and she would answer, I'm a truthful and honest person person. You know what I mean? Like just a lot of little cues that she shows, um, even though she's trying really hard to maintain this face, which is like calm. She's trying to maintain that, but she breaks all the time. Did you ever have any group chats with family members who are witnesses in this case? <laughs> yes. Yes, she did. It takes a lot of effort for her to not have a B face here. Look at her. See the tongue, the breathing, the blinking. She's just trying really yeah, hard okay. to yes. keep collected and calm here. Look through those. Maybe I'll have to speed it up. Lolly's like, oh crap, look at these text messages. They were planning everything. What am I going to do now? Well, Mr. Lally's looking through that packet. Can I just ask uh, to make sure the record is clear? Did you delete any of your calls before you turned your phone into Did you delete it? I spoke with okay, the so, two officers that I handed my phone. Over. Look at that. Did you delete any of your phone calls? No, I was in shock. My, my friend was dead in the snow. Uh, I just gave them my phone or something, right? Did you delete any phone calls? I... Over over two, and I asked if I could delete and the I personal asked, conversations delete with my daughters. Something. And they said, absolutely, yes, that I could. So okay. other than calls with your daughters that you deleted, did you delete any other calls on your phone at all? Would, so again, okay, so you deleted your phone calls with your daughters. 
Did you delete anything else? Yes or no? Text messages. It was actually text messages with my daughters. Other than your daughters? That I deleted. And that was all I deleted. Did you delete any phone calls? I... Did you delete any phone calls? Yes or no? Do not. All that. Recall deleting any. Lots of things happening here, right? Ah, and she looks up and she's like, recall, delete. Like she does so much with her face. That is, uh, here we have the teeth showing, which is a, a sign of anger, aggression. It's just like, it's a simple question. Did you delete any phone calls the night of the, the death? No, I just handed my phone. Or yes, I did. But all of this is unnatural. Phone calls at all. And I then she looks at it. Whenever she's saying something that is very, like, suspicious from, from the... The questions are very... Um, are pointing out how there are a lot of suspicious activities, right? She says, uh, I didn't delete anything. And she looks at the jury would have no reason to delete okay anything. nobody asked you so if you had a different. reason nobody asked you if you had a reason we asked you did you delete anything then i didn't delete any phone calls i do not remember deleting phone calls I means you might have in day-to-day -day life people delete things people do delete things but we want to know did you delete things so all of those um gaslighting the getting out of getting out of the, the question being asked and also uh, a, a method that a lot of manipulative people use is word salad. Is you take something and you just start talking, talking, but you don't say anything. Did you delete the phone calls? I talked to officers about my phone with my daughters. Okay, did you delete any phone calls? I didn't, I texted with them. Okay, did you delete any phone calls? A lot of people delete things. Really? But I do not recall oh, deleting you don't recall. any phone calls. But did you delete them? Oh, now you don't recall. It's different, right? It's not, no, I did not delete. The only thing I deleted was my thing, my conversations with my daughter. No. Now it's, I don't recall. In day-to-day -day life, did you delete any of the calls? To and then he had to ask again, and she's rolling her eye. I'm going to have to answer this guy. He's so annoying, right? John O'Keefe. No. Did you delete any of your calls with Nicole Albert? No. So she finally says no, but it takes him about five, six questions to get that no from her. And why? Why? Is it because she finally realized I have to answer because he's going to keep asking and I'm just going to answer. I'm just going to lie about it. Or is it because she was being truthful the whole time? It was going to be no, but she just can't be clear and concise when they, when he asks initially, did you delete the phone calls? Like why does she have to go into circles for five, six questions? Did you delete any of your calls with Brian Albert? No. Chris Albert. No. With Julie Albert. No. Looking at the jury. No. Looking at the jury. Any of the witnesses in this case, did you delete any calls before you turned that phone over? No. No. Yeah, she was definitely ready. She had all those no's under her breath. And notice again, she looks at the jury. No. 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 Okay. And then the excessive blinking here. May I proceed? Yes. <laughs> her hand. He's like, may I proceed to give her the paper? She's like, all right, put it here. I don't want to look at your face. Ms. McCabe, I'm handing you a packet of documents. Appears to be about 10 pages long. Do you recognize what's in those documents? Yes. 
you indicated already that you were part of a group chat with um, certain members of your family and friends. Correct. Uh, did that group chat, I'm most interested in the group chat between yourself, Nicole Albert, uh, Brian Albert, Matt McCabe, on or around that group chat starting on or around uh, February 1st, 2022. Okay. Does that look like a true and accurate reflection of the text messages between or certain of the text messages between and among that group? Yes, the one I've the ones I've seen, yes. On February Can you just tell me what page you're on? I'm sorry. Of course, Your Honor. The uh, bait stamp number? 2148. Okay, thank I'm you. Going to start. Thank you. Uh, and they should go relatively chronologically, Your Honor, page okay. by page. Um, on February 1st, 2022, around 2.15 in the afternoon on this group chat, did you receive a message from your husband on the group? That's, this is on page 2148. And it should be the middle bubble. Um, the middle and the bottom bubble. Quote, Julie said channel four is in DE. You see that? Yes. And the response from Matt McCabe is eating, I assume, quote, ask Chris to ask some questions. Tell them the guy never went in the house, end quote. You see that? Yes. You look at the next page. <laughs> How about saying, Talk. tell them John. Mm -hmm. Tell them There's John never went into the house. Brian Albert. Mm -hmm. What is that answer? Exactly. Does it appear to you from this chat that Matt McCabe was directing witnesses, specifically Chris Albert, what to say to the news media? Objection. I'll allow that. Is that what you're seeing? That is not a how I would understand this. He never went in the, tell them he never went in the house was the story that had been concocted between and among this group of people on this chat, correct? Jackson. I'll allow them. No. John never went in the house. It wasn't a story. It was the truth. And it is the truth. Just like she said, I hit him. Correct. Oh, wow. What it? Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I think she's so snarky. She's like, correct. Kind of like, I can say whatever I want because I'm on this side and she's on that side. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. So according to this chat, at least, <clears throat> the very base level, this is one witness telling another witness to give certain information <clears throat> to the media that could be useful to the group. Correct? Tell them the guy never went in the house, right? Objection. Sustained. Matt McCabe was directing Chris Albert. Chris Albert wasn't even at the house, was he? Chris Albert was not at the house, no. But this chat is Mike, uh, I'm sorry, Matt McCabe, your husband, telling Chris Albert, who was never at the house and would have no personal knowledge of what happened at the house, to specifically say, the guy never came in the house. The guy, by the way, being John O'Keefe. Right? That's what he wrote. Hmm. So if he didn't know, Does why is he saying that? A little bit like collusion? Objection. Yeah. Her face. <laughs> At some point, you sought out uh, Carrie Roberts' cell phone number shortly after the 29th. Or maybe not. Maybe on the 29th. Let me go back here real quick. Her look to the prosecutor is what I want us to take a look at here at 320. Matt McCabe, your husband, telling Chris Albert, who was never at the house and would have no personal knowledge of what happened at the house. Right after he says collusion. Say, look at her look the to the, the prosecutor. The guy, by the way, being John O'Keefe. Right? That's what he wrote. Does that sound to you? No. Look at her look. Objection. Look at her look to the prosecutor. Like, are you going to say something? Are you going to say something, sir? At some point, you sought out uh, Carrie Roberts' cell phone number shortly after the 29th. 
or maybe not, maybe on the 29th, correct? Correct. You didn't have her cell number in your phone? No. One of your primary concerns was to make sure that you got in contact with Carrie Roberts before the day's end, right? I wanted to speak to Carrie as she was on her way to the hospital, and I wanted to check in on John. One of your primary concerns, Ms. McCabe, was that you wanted to make sure you got a hold of Carrie Roberts and had communication with her before the end of the day. It had nothing to do with getting in touch with her by the end of the day. It was a friend reaching out, wondering how her friend was doing, who was just taken off the front lawn. On the 29th? Yes. So before the end of the day, Ms. McCabe, you can do this all day long. Before the end of the day, you're trying to get a hold of Carrie Roberts, correct? Immediately in the morning, I wanted to get in touch with her. Right. So you sought out her phone number. First, you tried my client, Karen Reed, correct? Correct. But then you found a, another source for that information. Is that right? Correct. And you said just a second ago, you were claiming that you needed that information because you, were, you knew that she was on the way uh, to see John O'Keefe's parents. She was picking them up. Um, and you wanted to check on them. Correct. You've been friends with the O'Keefe family for years, haven't you? Correct. So you didn't have a need to get Carrie Roberts' phone number, did you? I wanted to speak with Carrie. Okay, that's not the question. Doing. See, again, evasive, evasive, evasive. Were you friends with them for years? Yes. So you didn't need her phone number. I wanted to speak with her. That's not the question. The question is... Did you need her phone number or did you have her phone number? Because you guys knew each other for a long time. I wanted to speak to her. I was not going to call Peg. You had her phone number, didn't you? I do, yes. So if you wanted to check on somebody, you could have just called her. I was not going to call Peg O'Keefe on the way to see her son at the hospital. Check on your friend? Just too much. I wanted to ask Carrie. I didn't, I'm sure she was boggled down and probably did not want to speak with anyone. It was a simple thing. I made watch sure this. I it was got a Carrie simple Rob thing. And watch her face on this whole thing. Like she's going to do a shoulder shrug. She's going to do a lot of tongue uh, movement here because she's going to say it was a simple thing. This is not an evil plan. There's nothing evil going on here, but watch her body language. I'm actually going to make this a little bit slower so that we can look at her mannerisms. Let's do a 0.75. Robert's ahead, number. Jen. So ahead, I Jen. could check in and see how John was doing. Also, we had just been through an extremely traumatic event together. Sure. There's nothing evil here. Look at her face. There's nothing evil here. I mean, you're trying to sound like a victim, you know, because you keep saying, oh, I was just having dinner with my kids in the kitchen. We were going to go to a basketball game or I was just trying to do this and there's nothing evil here. But your whole face is like evil. So uh, this is actually, this light right here, hold on. It's actually from right there. These are the faces that I grabbed when she was saying this, there's nothing evil here. So, you know, like, okay, sure. But you definitely look like, you definitely look like, um, you're not being genuine and you're not really genuinely sad about your friend. You definitely look like you, there's a little bit of uh, anger there. Why? Why are you so angry at us? Well, I guess because they are accusing her to be colluding with the investigator, manipulating and doing all these things to get their story straight, right? But definitely her body language is really, really aggressive, you know? So here, a couple of other things I noticed. Uh, this was, I forgot what question that was, but it was an important question. She looks up to the right. So 
let's see we are at 323 so this was here that she looked up to the right 313 let's see let me put it back to normal okay there she looks up to the right and usually looking up to the right is a signal of deceit because when we access our memory we look down so just uh you know just a, a note i don't know but she is looking up to the right now here is her text messages to the people <laughs> So they're, they're in this group text, right? Nicole Albert, Brian Albert, the, the owners of the house where the body was found. Then we have Jennifer herself. And then we have Matt, her husband saying, let's not talk. Let's not text about this. Like we'll know more stuff tomorrow. And then what happens is she goes to the investigator's house to drop off their child. Um, but she doesn't go in. She doesn't talk to him. But then all of a sudden there's this meeting with the investigating the prosecutor to go over the facts of the case, but she never discloses that. It's very suspicious. Uh, it's very suspicious. And then the jury's just looking at her like, please stop looking at us, dude. So here's here's a little bit of the tongue jut, right? Tongue jut is when you have your tongue out. Uh, it could be when they're speaking, they go like, or I don't know how she does it. She does it all the time. <laughs> I don't know, but tongue jot could be kind of like I got away with what I just said or did something, you know, I got caught. Uh, could be like a, a gleeful excitement from somebody who is manipulating and they just say something like a statement that maybe it's not truthful, but they were able to get it out. So they do a little bit of this could also be a little bit of anger, kind of like well, when we don't like somebody, when we have children, we go like, mm, da, 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 da. so with her, a lot of it is kind of like a cleanser, in my opinion. She does have a couple of faces like this, where it seems like she is displaying a sign of anger and disgust for the, pro uh, I'm sorry, for the defense attorney. But um, this is okay. So this is what was the phrase where I got this screenshot. I was shocked and horrified. Oh my gosh, she's telling him everything. And then the tongue jut. So it's usually at these moments that she's doing the tongue jut. So it's not like out of nowhere. You know, it's after an important question and kind of like, uh, is this a cover up? Are you saying, oh my gosh, she's telling him everything? Or, oh good, she's telling him everything. <laughs> like what kind of telling him everything is that? So another one here. Uh, showing disgust, like I said, pacifying or to moisten um, the lips due to stress. Uh, so throughout her testimony, a lot of it, a lot of it. And then passive aggressive is something that I added to this because her facial expressions, her, uh, in the, okay, so here, uh, conf trying to confuse their, their target, you know, uh, being annoyed, visibly angry, and just her faces, like her resting face, that she really tries to to be calm, apparently, on this third picture here, she tries. But very shortly after, she breaks, like her face just breaks, and he gets so angry. So that's something that not only I see, but I feel, right? Like when she looked at the attorney, this is her face when she looked at him, like Lolly. And then, you know, that was right after the attorney asked, does that sound like collusion that we just watch? What else? And then the alligator's here because she can't see the alligator. The nose flare, her, no, her nostrils opening up, like, you know, that's a, a, a very clear sign of anger. Her faces, are, her facial expressions are so aggressive. And if you are a witness in this case and you lost a friend of yours and you're here testifying, okay, maybe your family has been 
uh, spoken about, and maybe there was a lot of social media, you know, talks about yourself there, but still you were sitting here to talk about your deceased friend, to try to bring justice for him. And you should be a little bit more, maybe humble, a little bit more gentle, uh, because it's not about you. And she's making this a lot about her. She's very aggressive and anger on her responses because she's feeling attacked. Instead, I don't know. I wouldn't. Um, there were other people that testified, even her husband, Matt McCabe, even him, uh, that seemed a little bit more level headed. So I don't know if this is just her personality or if she does have some, some things going on here. Then we also have, here's the definition for the flaring nostrils or an out outward display that indicates a person is angry and may be ready to fight. When a person is angry, their nostrils flare, indicating that they are taking in more oxygen to prepare for a physical altercation. If you witness someone with flared nostrils, stay calm and watch their reactions. And that's what we're doing. We're just watching her reactions you know, uh, she shows a lot of teeth, a lot of teeth uh, exposed, which also are connected to anger. Um, she she shows teeth not only as she's speaking, which is normal, you know, for our teeth to show, but she shows teeth like like in an anger, and it's very quick sometimes. So for us, we have to capture it when she is um, showing them kind of like this. And this is a frown, a furrowed, a frowned forehead. Let me go back to that one. Because I could notice because her forehead was like so straight and normal and all of a sudden it changed. So it's uh, tense and it's slightly contorted here. Uh, and then the, the duper's delight, the smile, I was very um, surprised to see this because I didn't expect her to have these smiles, but I did catch one or two smiles from her. Uh, so duping delight, the near irresistible thrill some people feel in taking a risk and getting away with it. The presence of others intensifies the delight and increases the chances that some of the excitement, pleasure, and contempt will leak. More manipulative individuals are vulnerable to that emotion, meaning they are getting away with something. Let's say she's lying, for example. I don't know. Let's say she's lying. She got away with it. And at the time, she can't resist, especially if she's a highly manipulative person. So she has to do a smile. So I think I have more on this. Let's see. Uh, because the time where he. Okay, it was right here, right there. She tell she's telling him everything. That's when her smile came out. Let me go back so you can see. This is the slide I'm talking about. She starts with a smile with the closed lips because she's answering. Right after she says this phrase, she's telling him everything. She lets this and this smile out. And it's one second. It's very quick. But I definitely saw that. This is her facial expression when she answers something and she looks at the jury. She's like, no. Ah, <laughs> like she's going to eat them or something. And the jury is like, please don't look at us. Please don't attack us. Please leave us alone. So that is her look, her, her look. Uh, the shoulder shrug she does at one point, like, like, I don't know. And I caught that because I thought it was a little abnormal. Uh, usually when we don't know something, we'll go like, I don't know. Like we'll do both shoulders at the same time. We'll do them like up and high, kind of like, I don't know. Kind of like this guy in the picture is doing right now. And with her, it was kind of like kind of like a different one. So I thought it was interesting. Uh, and it may indicate that she's not fully committed to the information she's answering. That's why it was different than what we're used to, the common natural body reaction we have. 
And this is another phrase where she's talking about her friend. Carrie's a, bl a blunt person, unlike me. Carrie talks a lot. So that's where I get a lot of her um, manipulative, not only manipulative, but uh, not sarcastic. I'm trying to find the word, the other thing that she comes off as passive aggressive, like in her face, in Carrie's face, she pretends to be a friend, but behind her back, she has hate when she talks about other people. Uh, even when she talks about the defendant, Carrie Reed, she says she's, she's hysterical. It's impossible, blah, 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 blah. It's just so much. Even when she started her testimony last week on Friday, she's talking to the, to the prosecutor and she's like, yeah, she kept calling my name. Jen. And she makes this face kind of like, I was like, oh, that's a little scary. Please stop doing that. Please stop doing that. Just say she screamed my name three times and I will believe you. So it's just the way she talks about other people. It's not very nice. Um, and here are some things that she actually did that she, that it, her testimony actually shows right now. She created a timeline with other parties that were supposed to be witnesses or were supposed to uh, answer questions about the, the incident. She sat down with people and she said, let's create a timeline. So the press, the defense is saying, listen, they are colluding. They are colluding. Something she said today, uh, a phrase she said was, we were working with the police. I understand she's saying we were working with the police, maybe in a way that we were, you know, just trying to help. But that's what they're being accused of. We were working with the police. Like, we are all the same here. That's my friend, Albert. He's the police. His uh, brother, Kevin Albert, is the police. We are all working together here. Okay, maybe she didn't mean that, but she did sit down and create a timeline, and that is a fact, right? She had multiple calls to John O'Keefe uh, in the middle of the night after the time he's supposed to be deceased, multiple calls that were deleted from her phone but stayed in his phone record. So that is susp suspicious. Um, then... She also had this meeting, supposed off the book meetings with the investigator and never mentioned it to anybody. And then last, but definitely not least, and it hasn't come up yet. It's going to come up tomorrow. She Googled how long to die in the cold. Now she says she Googled that because Karen was desperate asking her to Google that in the morning between 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. The defense team hinted that they have phone records that show she did that after going up the stairs around 2 a.m. So who knows what's going to happen tomorrow, right? It's a very exciting day. So I do believe she she has this, <sighs> my conclusion of watching her, my conclusion of watching her cross today is she has a lot of anger. She's passive aggressive. Uh, there is no need for all that anger that is coming out of her to answer the questions. Uh, maybe there were some details where she is being caught for something that doesn't look good for her, but she still didn't need to have that amount of anger since the beginning. She doesn't need to be as combative. Uh, she does ask a lot to have to see the things instead of saying, I don't remember. Yes, no, maybe. I don't know, so that the attorney can have an opportunity to say, would it refresh your recollection, you know? So and other things are, you are twisting things. You are creating a case that is not true. Uh, you uh, just be very argumentative and accusatory to the attorneys that are questioning her. Uh, so body language-wise, teeth, tongue juts, um, Shoulder shrug, a uh, passive aggressive look, eye rolling, um, nostrils fl flaring, teeth showing, just uh, a lot of anger. So let's just watch a little bit of the rest of her testimony before we get out of here. And hopefully tomorrow is going to be an amazing day in court. And we're going to have a little bit more clarity on what's going on. Let's, because that would be collusion. Let me collusion, collusion okay? Sustained. Look at her roll her eyes. Text to the group, including Brian Albert, Nicole Albert, and Matt McCabe, 
where you inform them that, quote, and this is, Your Honor, on page 40, I'm sorry, 2158, where you inform them, quote, Carrie is here going over timeline, end quote. Correct. So you reported back to Brian, Nicole, and Matt that Carrie was where? She came over my house. And you two sat down and went over a, quote, timeline together. Peggy spoke to Carrie. Yes no? I didn't ask about Peggy. Well, that's where the timeline started at. Oh. Did you ask Carrie, or did Carrie come over, show up at your house and, quote, unquote, go over a timeline? Carrie showed up asking to sit down with me to do a timeline so we would remember everything that had happened. And you wanted to be super helpful about that, right? Super. Super. Please be so sarcastic. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Super. You wanted to be helpful to Carrie Roberts. The two of us were trying to figure out what had happened to our friend. And Why? so you made sure that cops. you created and drafted with Carrie Roberts a timeline for her, correct? I didn't make sure of anything. She was the one that asked me to do it. And not only did you create a timeline, you then reported back to your group, Ryan Albert, Nicole Albert, Matt McCabe, that she was creating this timeline with you wow. on February 1st, So she told the group, okay, is we're getting right? this timeline yes. together. That is so crazy. How do you keep a straight face, lady? Why are you getting a timeline After together? After you created or drafted this timeline with Carrie. If it's the fact. She actually sat fact. for an interview with the police. Did she not? <clears throat> um, That's not in the uh, chats. I'm just asking. Yeah. She's like, she where, is where is it? Where is it? Look at her face. When? You tell me. Pretending to be dumb. I hate that. I'm not sure of when you're talking about. Okay. Well, we're so, just talking about yes. when you created timeline, the timeline. Created on February 1st. That's what mm -hmm. he's talking about. At some point thereafter, Carrie Roberts conducted a formal interview with the police about this case, correct? Do you have the report of, of that date? Do you remember, ass face? She did the interview in your living room, ma'am. Right? She, she pretends to be dumb. There the whole was time. on He's Tuesday, like, oh. <laughs> two officers came to the house and she sat in the other room and spoke with them. So, did you hear it? Did you do the time my question. She did the interview at your house. Correct. Oh, they came to my house to interview me, and she happened to be there. So they asked if they could speak with we her were working also. On the okay. timeline. Did she or did she not do an interview at your house? Did, yes. All right. Was that hard? That wasn't a hard question, right? Resting bitch face. Sorry, I had to do it. Look at her face, you were rolling her eyes. Weren't you? I just can't. I can't. I was eating dinner. You were with present my children. For the I was in the house, yes. With my and children. you listened to that interview, didn't you? No, I did not. You made sure you gave Carrie Roberts everything she needed for that interview, correct? Quote, everything she might need for that interview, didn't you? And where is this that you're quoting from? In your, oh, in your head, you because you, you said quoted, it. I thought it was in here. It's I apologize. Not. It's in your, it's we'll what you said. It's a testimony. Did you tell her everything that you wanted her to say? No, I did not. Did you in any way attempt to influence her testimony before she gave that interview yes, in you your did. living room? Absolutely timeline. not. Carrie is her own person. Look at the jury. Look at the jury. No. But then you All did right. report your pro her progress to the Albert and McCabe group in that group chat, didn't you? Can you yes, show me you where, did. please? Sure. In the facts. Isn't it true that in a group text with Brian Albert, Nicole Albert, Matt McCabe, you wrote, and this is on page 2159, quote, and we handed Carrie, sorry, and, and handed phone to Carrie. You remember that? I see that, yes. And the very next day. Do you remember text that? I see that. from you telling the group, she's telling him everything. In all caps, two exclamation points. Yes. Look at her smile. Went on to say at smile to the PM, camera, honey. Basically the same moment. Quote, all the stuff. End quote. Correct? Correct. So when you said a couple of minutes ago that you weren't listening to what she was saying. You were lying, right? That was a lie, wasn't it? 
We're talking about two different interviews. I'm talking about what? when the Wasn't officers came to my house and spoke to her there. You're saying that I handed the phone over, so that would be a different interview. Okay, this is on February 1st at 2.55. I wasn't there. You were there. She was in your house on February 1st giving an interview to the police, wasn't she? One day she was there giving an interview to the police. And while she was there... Uh, but I do not believe it was at 2.55. It was later in the evening. So I think you might day. have two events confused. It's the Either same day. Way, whether she was on the phone with the police or sitting there in your living room with the police, you were listening to her and reporting back to the group. She's telling them everything. The one... No, it's not correct. The one that she did oh, with the police, the she did in the other room. And the one she did on the phone, I I said, she's telling them everything. I know. That, because I know. Carrie is an extremely blunt person, and she was giving personal feelings Look about the situation. Anger, and about I was friend. horrified by it. To the police. To the police. And you're listening. I heard a statement she said that horrified me. And then you're reporting mm. it back to the group, weren't you? That one thing she stated, I reported back to the group. Was yes. So I'm so great. Right. Correct? One it side. was a phone call. One side of it, right? It was a phone call. You're listening in on a police interview, one side of it. Correct. correct. You're eavesdropping on that interview. It was a phone correct? call. Yeah, it's still an interview. I'm sitting with her and she's taking the call. And then you're reporting that interview back on her success everything. in that interview, in your mind. Back to the group involving Brian Albert, Nicole Albert, and Matt McCabe. Isn't that what you're doing? Objection. I'll allow it. Yeah. I absolutely not. That is not how it went. I was horrified because Carrie's a blunt person, not like me. And she not had made like a comment twice. about Miss Reed and Mr. So O'Keefe's relationship. And I was shocked and horrified, horrified that she said it the way that she did. You're so shocked and Look horrified. At the I said, oh my God, she's telling them everything. Yes. Decided it was so important that you need to report that back to Brian Albert and his friends. I'm I sorry, was I was horrified. So you reported that back? Yes, I said she told them everything. I don't I don't believe her. I don't believe this. When lady. you were first confronted with these messages at a, a separate proceeding in June of 2023, she, she claimed. That she I mean, I think remember. she thinks everybody's stupid because she's like, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, no, I didn't really. I yeah, like she just says it in a way that we're supposed to be like. Oh, okay, that all makes sense. Yeah, that all makes sense. Yeah. You're texting with a group that is being accused of collusion. You're creating a timeline so that everybody has their story straight. Your answer matches Brian Albert's answer when you say, I wish he did go inside. I wish he did. He was my friend. You guys call him the guy in a text. You delete your, your phone calls. You create a new a new testimony now where you say now she said I hit him I hit him I hit him before you had said something different she, that she said uh did I hit him is he dead is he dead so now you're changing that you're hiding a, a meeting where you discuss the case with the lead investigator you are gathering information from the investigator texting your little group of friends saying let's not do text anymore and then you look at us as you're testifying, like, yeah, yeah, she said that. What that but not stupid. About, correct? correct. And now you just all of a sudden have this newfound memory of exactly <laughs> what that text message was referring to. Correct? Look at her face, Jackson. the rolling eyes. I'll allow it. Yes, because Kerry Roberts said a statement and a jog. I said, oh, my God, that's what I meant when I said she said everything. When did she say this statement? Oh, she just remembered uh, something. Okay. Uh, probably in the fall. She has said, made this statement ah. a few times in reference to Karen. You and Carrie Roberts are still coordinating your statements together. Oh, no, Ooh. we're not. It's just an opinion she has of Miss Reed. And you also have a bunch of opinions and of Miss Reed. That became your, quote, everything, all this stuff. It didn't just become it. I forgot. That I had written it, and one day Carrie made the <laughs> like statement. Like she forgot that I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. I'm sure it happens to everyone. You forget something, no, and then you're like, oh my God, that's try, what it was. Don't so, try I'm not to. Sure that happens to everyone. Objection. Don't Sustained. try you to a connect question. with the When you were asked under oath, mm -hmm. under ago, oath, mm -hmm. when it was things were fresher in your mind, you were asked specifically what she was referring, what you were referring to, and your answer was, "I have no idea." Correct? Correct. Because you didn't want to tell them 
that you had coordinated your statement with Carrie Roberts. Isn't that right? No, no, that is not right. I did not remember what it was. Went on to be asked specifically, uh, do you know who you were referring to? And you said, maybe Carrie, maybe I'm talking to Carrie. And the question was, but you don't recall this text? And your answer was, I don't remember. She keeps trying to look that's up for the answers, but ago, that's not correct. emotional. Correct. When you're remembering an emotional now you're talking fact, about some you look down to the right. Memory of a disparaging don't comment that Where Carrie Roberts has about answer? my client. And that's the everything in your mind. Yes, the things that she was saying. Show some teeth and smile, babe. Quite obviously. Smile to the camera, what you were love. To in that text in real time, Ms. McCabe, was that Carrie Roberts was telling the police, quote, everything that you had laid out for her in this timeline. Yeah, that you created. Had, correct. Objection. Right. So it's sustained as to that form. You can ask that question in a proper way. Correct. Look at her face. Like I got away with this. He got the. Time. Was what you had. He got the sustained objection. Worked out with Carrie in that timeline meeting, wasn't it? That was the everything you were referring to. Correct. Tom. Incorrect. We really never nice. worked together to come up with a story. We have the facts, and the everything was a comment about your client. You went on so in your group you chat timeline? with Brian Albert, Nicole Albert, and Matt McKay to give running updates about whether or not Carrie Roberts was actually following the script, correct? Incorrect. There was no script. 167. She's getting mad. Matt McCabe texted the group, Brian, comma, sitting separate, end quote, correct? Yes. It sounds like Matt McCabe is reporting back to Brian Albert following your instructions we're sitting separately objection sustained she was trying one to find an answer later, but brian albert sustained. had a one word response to the brian sitting separate correct yes what was that a little faster response? so okay finish so it sounded like he was getting his approval for where people were situated in that meeting correct objection sustained Page 2168, 515. It's very hard to just look at two texts and try to understand what the context is. Mr. McCabe, if you don't understand a question that I have, just let me know. But otherwise, let me ask a question. 21. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, did you see her face now? It was like rolling eyes and then like, okay. All right. Page 2168, uh, 515. You wrote the group, quote, you listening? Correct? Yes. And at the same time, 515, you then wrote, cops here again, end quote, correct? Correct. That was in reference to the police coming over to your house to further interview Karen Roberts, wasn't it? That was when they came to talk to me. And Carrie Roberts was there. Correct? Was at my house, correct. And a few minutes later at 523, Nicole A few Roberts moments later. Texts, Call us after, correct? Correct. And a few minutes after that, Matt McCabe texts, quote, this girl could write a book dot, 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 nonstop, correct? Correct. So obviously Matt McCain, along with you, was listening to Carrie Roberts in her interview. We were sitting in the kitchen, eating dinner with our children, and Carrie Roberts oh, was in a children. different room, but she was going on and on and Don't on as she does. The because, children. because they were in the other room. And you could listen. I could hear voices. You could hear her. Just interview. voices? Did not hear her interview. I could hear them talking, but I was sitting at a table with my children, eating dinner, getting ready oh, to go okay. to a basketball game. So no problem then. She only heard you can voices. To Matt McCain. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you I love it. About this interview, you just testified under oath and under penalty of perjury, not hearing anything about, just hearing voices. Your next text was, quote, she is telling them everything. Yes. End quote. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So what you said just a few minutes ago about not well, you didn't what you're hear anything, voices, you just heard voices. Check. Sustain. Don't roll your eyes and give me that smile, honey. Don't do that. Later, we'll see you. Pull out her response. One word. What was her response? Good. Oh, yeah, do the lip. Got away with it. So in order. Excessive blinking. Those texts say, 
You listening? You said you listening? Objection, Your Honor. The, the objection system. The side eye to the, the prosecutor the day, and the squinting eyes to the defense. No, I was sitting eating dinner and some of the things, obviously I overheard, but I was not eating. Oh. I'm saying oh. there's a possibility if I'm sitting in this room eating dinner and someone's in another room talking, you can hear bits and pieces. Was I eavesdropping? No. Is hey, there something? Calm down, story? lady. Are no. you going to get out of the stand and just punch him? A second ago, you said you told this jury. You said I couldn't hear a thing. All I could hear was voices, like muffled voices from the other room. Yeah, voices. On on What's up now? And then when I confronted you with a text message where you said, "Oh, you're getting angry, huh? Now it's huh? not like I've heard a couple of things. Which is it? No, she was going on Which and on and on, it? like she does. Like she does, and you were listening, and you were listening on, and on, on and on, on, on like, like you do. I was probably hearing bits and pieces. Turn down for what? Why was it so important to report back to the group that you were happy that Carrie Roberts was She's saying? really quote, trying to keep judgment. her Hello. calm there. Yeah, look at the paper. Do the tongue. Do the tongue jot. We had both lost our friend. Oh, Kelly don't Roberts do the victim with me. In shock, as was I. You in guys shock. have shown no compassion. You guys have shown no reverence. You guys have shown no love for Mr. John O'Keefe. You guys have called him the guy. And now you're going to use him in your testimony? No, 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 no. Had all this information that just kept coming back to us and back to us. And it was. Uh huh. It's terrifying when you, you uh -huh. go through an experience and you're in shock. And Carrie was remembering things. I was remembering things. Uh huh. So I was happy for her that she was piecing it all together, and I had pieced it all together because uh -huh. at the end of the day, our friend was dead, and we were trying to figure out what had happened to him. Right. So why did you say I was happy for her, and then when like, and look at your face, lady. Look at your face. Tell your face that you're trying to help. Together. There was no direction. We were all trying to figure out what had happened because that's what you do when you lose somebody that's you love. That's what the police does. You tell the truth. You don't need to clean your palate now because you got away with your long answer here. But you tell the police what happened, what you saw, what you know. You don't come up with timelines. You don't sit in little group text messages saying, this is what's going on in the investigation. You don't say we're going to know more tomorrow. You don't say she's telling them everything like we planned or whatever. You don't do any of that. You don't go investigate. You don't get people's phones. You don't delete phone calls. You tell the police what you know. You're honest and to the best of your ability. So, no, I'm not buying, Mrs. McCabe. Are you happy for you and Brian and Matt and Nicole? for me and for her because we were going through this together there was no conversation she was annoying she talks a lot Roberts, right? Judge. I love it. there is no there is no story there's facts and truth on this side there's no story the story that you've created oh is not the truth Did I create? I hit my head my oh now we see her side her real 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 face she starts to show and she sits back and she looks up like i said what i said i said what i said alan what did you that's fact. Her anger is palpable. The fact that conveniently you didn't mention in your report the length, grand jury, <coughs> right? That kind of fact. Objection. Yeah, you, you forgot. I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. The, the girlfriend said at the crime scene, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. That's what she's testifying to. But she never testified to that before. She completely forgot about it. And today, two years later, she says that's what happened. Is that right? That is a fact I mentioned. So in some Liar. reports, it's there. Sorry. No, I don't believe you. No, I don't you believe you. Very close tabs on Carrie Roberts. Didn't you? No. Squinting on eyes. On January 29th, if you look on page 22, 23, did you text mm -hmm. the group, quote, Carrie talked to cops <coughs> and kept it simple, end quote. Okay. Yes. How do you know? How do you know how she kept it? For you Stop looking at the prosecutor to save you. Objection. Assisting. And he did save her. And Lolly's like, objection. I'm so tired. And over and over and over again. You're reporting to this tight group. Nicole, Brian Albert, your husband. How Carrie's doing in her stories to the police. Aren't you? Over and over and over. Over and over and over. I am telling them what is going on. I wouldn't say it. Well, let's count them. Was there four of them? See? That is exactly the type of behavior that is not normal. The argumentative, the let's count them, the defiance to the defense attorney, just saying, I don't recall it being over and over, like have a little humility. Well, let's count them then. Like, dude, are you going to like 
Get your gloves. You're saying over and over and over and over. Gloves. It's a bit extreme. I see. So you, you take You're extreme. The way that I phrase over and over and over. Well, it's misleading, I believe. I see. Okay. You're Let's misleading. Try this in a non-misleading way, okay? Okay. So at least one of us. At least one of us. Oh, As she looked at the prosecutor. <laughs> you consistently reported back you... to the group how Kerry Roberts was doing with the police. She deserves this. I'm sorry. I would update them after Kelly Don't Kerry the saw and spoke to the police. Again, You're scary. we were all trying to figure out what had happened to John. Mm -hmm. There's yet another text from Brian's wife, Nicole, on January 29th. And this is on page 22, 26. And she says, quote, we'll get more info tomorrow. Don't want to text about it, end quote. And then you texted right, correct? Correct. What's that about? Yeah. Objection. I'll allow it. Why are you not texting about it? We decided that we would talk on the phone. My children look on my phone. Her children uh -huh. look on her phone. We were working with the police. I was oh, you, sharing wait, you were information working with and the everything police? that it Wait, wait, you were working with the police? I thought you were just giving the police your testimony. You were working with the police? Happened. We didn't want it to leave our little circle because we were Ooh, trying to figure out what circle. happened and we're not going to go running around letting people see, oh my gosh, they think this might happen or that There's might so happen. There's so much doubt. It was nothing more than let's not she text about it. She is bringing so much doubt. This is supposed to be the start witness of the prosecution. The one who heard the defendant say, I hit him, I hit him. The one who knew that John didn't go into the house. The one that knows about the fights. The one, the savior, the best witness. I think she just blew the whole prosecution case because she's not believable. She's extremely angry. She's extremely combative. And there's a lot of suspicious activity. Our little group, we were working with the police. We were saying, let's not text about this. We'll know more tomorrow. What the hell, lady? What's happening? And you give an attitude? Yours, in your little circle. Correct. <laughs> Correct. I didn't want we it all out there. Right what we had you. fought had happened. I was going to let the police do their job. So by definition, the info that Nicole Albert was talking about, that needed to be kept very tight, very secret. Correct? In your little group. We needed the police to do their job. So we weren't going okay, to. Okay. So why were you investigating? Text, and the group wanted their text to be kept secret and private. Isn't that right? Yes. Not secret and private. We yes. just weren't going to communicate Let's certain things text. over text. Did you give, or did anybody give you any private information uh, the next day? On January 30th? Didn't even give me private information. So, yes. so a text from Nicole Albert. We'll get info. We'll get more info tomorrow. I don't want to text about it. That was on the 29th, right? Okay. So, did you wow. get additional info on the 30th, the next day? I have no idea. Did anything significant happen on January 30th in connection with this case? Any meetings? Any get-togethers? I, I went to the O'Keefe's house. Other than that, anything else? <laughs> on no. the way home. Okay, so see that. That is exactly what I'm talking about. The day before, the lady that owns the house where the body was found texts her saying, let's not text about this. We'll have more information tomorrow. The attorney asks her, tomorrow, did anything happen? Any meetings? Well, we went to the O'Keefe's house. She knew the question because she had an off-the-books meeting with the investigator. But instead of saying, well, yes, I actually met the investigator. She says, no, I went to the O'Keefe's. Anybody else? Well, uh, we dropped off my friend's daughter, and she happens to be the daughter of the investigator. So, yeah, we, we went to his house. Um, Kerry Roberts' daughter is good friends with Michael Lank. So we dropped her off at Michael Lank's house. Who's and the investigator? Mike's wife came out of the house, him and Kerry are friends. And, and that's the day she, you guys were you know, going to know more. And was consoling Kerry and asks how the O'Keefe's were doing. And, you know, we talked to her. So Word salad. No, I'm sorry. Gaslighting. Gaslighting. That's never been reported, has it? I guess I never thought oh. much of it. Never thought about reporting the fact that... Did, it wasn't the important. ...on the case... I didn't meet. No, she was I didn't working meet with, with the police. So you pulled up in the car. Tell me about that again. You pulled up in the car. And what happened? And Lex, her daughter, went into the house. Okay. And then you just drove away. No, Michael's wife came out of the house. Okay. And Michael. About what? She got in the car and was her and Carrie are friends, and she was checking on Carrie, and you know, just saying, "Oh my God, this is so crazy." You know, just checking in on the O'Keefe's. How long did that take? Fascinating. Well, Carrie's a talker, so. Uh, oh, an hour. see. 
Care is a talk. Standing outside. Sitting in the car. Unlike you, car, right? Because you're perfect. Never came in the house? I fe- not February 30th. I said February 30th. January 30th. Never went in the house? I might have ran into it at the bathroom. Oh, maybe I did go into the house. Mm-hmm. Sitting in the car for an hour? I was running, Carrie, and they were talking. We dropped her off. No, well, it's her maybe friend. I did go into the house. Did you it's have a friend. conversation before you came to today with anybody about you going to Michael Lang's house on January 30th? Anyway. Let me go back to it's her friend if I can, because that was another big face she made. So I actually made a note. 347 and 11. It's her friend. Let's see if this helps. With anybody about you going to Michael Lang's house on no. January 30th? Here. And they were talking. After it's her friend. Let's look at it's her, her face. friend. There you go. See how much happens just there? Just like. Let's see. Let's do it again. 347, 11. Okay. Pay attention to her face. And they were talking. Wait, actually, let me make this a little bit slower so that we can see her, her facial expression after she says it's her friend. It's her friend. You see how much happened? Did you have any conversation? There's no need for all of that. There's no need for all of that. It's a lot of emotion, a lot of anger, a lot of stuff going on. She looks indignant. How could you ask me such things? Yes. Who oh, who did you tell? It was a couple of weeks ago at the DA's office. Tell us more. Tell the us DA's more. Office had an not an interview. They just explained this process. I mean, a, a conversation? How about that? Yeah. Yes. You met with the DA's Who'd you meet with? Um, Mr. Lally, Ms. McLaughlin, Steve Nelson, um, Trooper, Brian Tully, um, I, I believe, oh, um, and another woman. I can't remember her name, unfortunately. Someone from the DA's office? Yes. But it was informal. It was like, uh, yeah. we just like saw no. each other. No, um, she's here today. She works with Steve Nelson. Oh. An employee of the DA's office. Yes. It sounds like a pretty big meeting. Yeah. A lot of people. I would call it a big meeting. There was what, five of them? How long did you have five of them and then you? Right? Uh, my daughter Allie came with me also. The meeting's getting bigger. Mm-hmm. He's you laughing. Know, no, we both went. Was Allie in the room when you were, I was going to say interview, but you take issue with every word I use, mm-hmm. when you were talked to by the DA? Allie and I wow, were both, there's a lot um, of arguments. in the room when they were. Uh, he's being very argumentative too. He's like, I would say interview, but you take issue with every word I use. <laughs> And then she goes and look, looks at the jury again with her crazy eyes. When they went over everything, you know, how this all works, because this is all brand new to us. And then they asked me to leave the room. Not a big meeting. The DA, the other DA, another lady from the district attorney's office, two other people, her and her daughter. And it wasn't a meeting. It wasn't an interrogation. It wasn't an interview. It was a conversation. Okay. Thanks um, for clarifying that, Jen. That I lost the end of that sentence when they received these funds. I didn't mean the word received. Did you receive anything? No, I looked at my grand jury notes. Um, now, at this meeting, was anybody taking notes? No. You have a bunch of lawyers and DAs, and nobody has a notepad in front of them? Like notes? I believe Mr. Lally had a number of folders on the table. Taking notes? Any notes? I know. I do not believe anyone was taking notes. It was a casual meeting to explain this process. Was that meeting recorded in any way that you're aware of? No. How long did the meeting last? Allie and I were probably in the room, I don't know, approximately 20 minutes. Then I left and they spoke with her. And then I went back in and they spoke with me. How long did they speak with you? Honestly, maybe half hour, hour. And during that I, half hour to an hour, did they go over with you what they expected your testimony to be? They never spoke about what they expected my testimony oh, to be. Oh, okay, just, good. Um, Nothing, right? Showed me some pictures that might oh, wait. be shown. Um, I pictures listened to the 911. Part of the testimony. 911 um, is part just of the, the house the and how I'd be asked to you know, oh, show. How okay, you would be asked? Picture of the house okay, so laser. that's part of the testimony. Maybe we started this conversation. It was because you said, in answer to my question, was anything ever brought up to you about this meeting in Lang's house? Mm-hmm. You said yes. Mm-hmm. So obviously they did talk to you about the testimony. It wasn't just about the process, correct? I was told, I asked what discovery had been turned in in regard to me. So you wanted to Whoa, hear, discovery. So sure you knew what you might be asked on cross-examination, correct? No, I she want- was actually saying, I want to know what the defense has about me. What discovery? She wasn't really saying 
I want to know what kind of questions they're going to ask me. How can I prepare for my testimony? She was saying, what do they have on me? That's what I got from her. I wanted to know what was coming. Yes. And you knew that one of the things was coming after this meeting. Well, let me ask it a different way. During this meeting, did Mr. Wiley tell you one of the things that's going to be coming is you had an off the books meeting at Lake's house. It's so coming now, babe. It's, no, it's coming now. It's told. coming you tomorrow. You the had uncovered a report that established that you were actually at Michael Lang's house for 45 minutes that had never been reported to the defense or the prosecution before the phone extraction had been done. Can you tell me that? I was told, I was asked, oh, were you at Michael Lanks on the 30th? So you had a lot of time to come up with a story about why you were at Michael Lanks, correct? Yes. Objection. I'll allow it. I didn't need time to make up a story because that I wasn't have the, the question. truth of why Did we you have time? And the truth, according to you, is you pulled up at Michael Lanks' house. The first responding officer and friends of the office <laughs> had a meeting with him the next day that was never reported to anybody for any purpose. I just met with his wife out in the car while the car was running for 45 minutes to an hour. That's your story. It's not a story. It's the truth. Carrie dropped her daughter <laughs> off. The wife came out. Carrie is a talker. They started talking. A tragedy had happened the day before. It is interesting, would you not agree, that the day before, you had this off-the-books meeting at Michael Lane's house. Nicole Albert says, we'll you'll have more, more information tomorrow. Tomorrow. Meaning, the very day, you show up at Lane's house. Again, I never spoke with Mike Lank at his house. It was not an off the books oh, meeting. It was Carrie dropping her daughter Calm at one of her good friend's house, whose husband happens up. to be a Canton cop. That, it, that is what just it is. Happens. That is the truth. It's just a, a coincidence. Another coincidence for the case. That's what it is. You think she's getting yes, away with it? Yes. There's more cross tomorrow. I mean, today it's already 12.30 a.m. where I am at. Um, that's, by the way, uh, what did Mr. Lally show you uh, in res respect of this issue about this meeting at Michael Lane's house? He showed me nothing. He told you that. You said he showed Brian you Tully pictures and then I don't want to call. Tully, 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 Tully. What exactly what did happened? you tell you at this meeting about this Michael Lane issue? He said, did you go to Michael Lang's on January 30th? Yes, and at first I said, no, I've never been to his house. And then I thought about it and I said, oh my gosh, yes, I did go there. And that was the extent of the conversation. You said, yeah, I did go there. Wait a minute, that's it? Like, what the heck were you doing at Michael Blake's house the day after this issue? Sure. Which is it? I'll allow it. You didn't ask a follow-up like that? I do not believe he did. So, Trooper Tully, had Mr. you come Lally, down come on. He confronted you with a, a fact that had never been disclosed before, to wit, you showed up at Michael Blake's house, and when you said, yeah, oh yeah, hang on, I think your words were, oh my gosh, yeah, I think I did go there. And he didn't ask a follow-up question? No. He was there. You're, he wasn't there. You're you're spinning all of this. I, I, you're spinning all of this. I'm spinning. There's a judge here. Make sure that I don't spin. I'm asking you a question. It's very direct. I do not believe you asked me a follow-up question. This. I don't have any conversation about Michael. Correct. Correct. Mr. Lally, didn't have so follow-up questions. I don't believe Mr. Lally was in the room. Oh, Wait, what? Said Mr. Lally, Mr. Lally. They were. They might not have been in the room he at that time. Now no, he's not so in the room. Just happened to what? Just saunter out. It was a different time. He went to pee. Oh, it was a different time. the conversation. Mr. Lally was not there when this conversation happened. She seems to be a compulsive liar. I mean, she goes like really quick because she just said Mr. Lally was in the room. Then she was like, you're spinning all of this. And then all of a sudden, Mr. Lally's not in the room. Like she just very fast comes up with quick answers. And another thing on this point is that she was saying um, it was a different time of the interview. And that's the same thing she said about overhearing her her friend Carrie's interview she said no 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 but that was that was a different time it was the same day but it was a different time of the interview so she's she's spinning all of this well, why is that because i met with Brian Tully and he was not there is Brian Tully taking notes no he's a state trooper interviewing a witness and he, he was objection sustained the same report that has you at Michael Lang's house mm -hmm. also has you picking up Nicole Albert going by the going by 34 Fairview just before you went to Michael Lang's house. Oh, what a right quick thing. We did not pick up Nicole Albert. So you went on 34 Fairview, then diverted. And right after you went by 34 Fairview, went directly over to Michael Lang's house. What was the reason you stopped by 34 Fairview first? We didn't stop by. Maybe Carrie slowed down, but we did Ooh. not stop by 34. We must so have car Dubai records. Fairview. Giddles, nope, that's how we get to Michael Lang's house. If the report shows that you actually stopped at 34 Fairview and then went to Michael Lang's house, would we have another oh my gosh moment? Nope, no oh my gosh moment. We did not pick up Nicole Albert. <laughs> did anybody else go with you over to Michael Lang's house? Oh my gosh, no, I was forgot. Carrying myself and her daughter. I remember oh, now. Um, maybe okay. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Well, we have another oh my gosh moment that you suddenly remember things. Uh, look at the mother. Unfortunately, I don't usually like to to look at them. I like to give them their privacy, but she's probably like, "What's happening?" And stop filming the lady. You know, honestly, I'm gonna fast forward this. Leave her alone. Actual report, correct? Correct. I just want to run through those time wise very quickly, just to orient you, if I can, and then I'll ask you some specific questions about it. Specific. There was a call at 12:14 a.m. Correct. <clears throat> correct. That was a call that you indicated was answered. You had a conversation with Mr. O'Keefe. Correct. It was a call at 12, 18 and 47 seconds. That call also was answered by you. John O'Keefe made that phone call, correct? Correct. Then there's the 12, 29 and 44 second call that you indicated was not answered. Correct. And that was a call to you, fr sorry, from you to him. Correct. There was a 12, 41 call from you to, to John O'Keefe, correct? That was? Correct. There was a 12, 41 and 54 second call from you to him, is that right? Correct. There was a 12, 43 and 19 second call from you to him. Correct. 12, 46 a.m. and 16 seconds Make from you to him. 1247 and 52 seconds from you to him. Correct. And 1250 and 37 seconds from you to him, correct? Correct. You saw in his extraction report that all of those calls after 1218 were missed calls, correct? In the, his report that you showed me? Correct. In other words, the only two calls that were answered, the 1214 and 1218, everything else was a missed call. I believe so. I would have to refer to it again because I've seen so many reports. And Ms. McCabe, according to the extraction reports that you've seen this morning, comparing yours to his, Every single one of those calls was deleted off your phone, correct? According to the reports. Can I see it? According to that report, yes. Let me ask you another question. <clears throat> Have you ever it's not true. Yes. In, in, in life, everybody does, right? Yes. What's one of the first things you do if you're with your daughter or your husband or a friend and you're in your house and you misplace your phone? What do you do? Oh, I'll ask them to call my phone. phone. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Even over and over and over, right? Correct. Could be as many as five, six. Like you were doing with John. Usually, I hear it the first or second time. Looking for a buzz or a ring, isn't that right? Correct. And you might do that if you're searching for a missing phone, correct? Correct. With you deleted those calls. calls. Deleted Why? Phone, you asked about this under oath at another proceeding, weren't you? Correct. And you claimed at another proceeding that you had an explanation for all these missed calls starting at 1229, 1241, 1241, 1243, 1246, 1247, 1250. You have an explanation for that, right? What is it? No. What is the explanation? Right? And I'm asking these calls. Yes, I'm asking, can I see it? No. I'm asking What's you the explanation? At, other, at this other proceeding, mm -hmm. under oath. Yes. Right? You explained that these calls were what? These missed calls, incessant missed calls. What were they? You used the word, right? right? Two words. I believe I used the word butt dials. <laughs> you claimed that every one of these calls was a butt dial. Is that right? Yes. Which happened before, guys. So you, literally butt with, I believe, Mr. Albert, Brian Albert. He said that he butt dialed uh, his friend, Brian Higgins, as well in the middle of the night because his phone was in his bed somewhere and I think he was getting intimate with his wife and his butt dialed Brian Higgins. Now, her butt is dialing John O'Keefe five times. So a lot of butts. John O'Keefe's phone butts. six times. And wait, right? wait. And when Brian Higgins and Brian Albert were at the bar, they were grabbing each other's butts. So the butts are very active in this trial. I don't remember making any of those calls. So my assumption is I put my phone in my back pocket. And your butt and just it. went for it. When you dial someone by mistake. A busy butt. You hit a button, set your phone down. The phone has to be open. You'll agree with that, right? Correct. It can't be locked. It takes several iterations of movement to get a phone open. It's ID or password. Your issue is Correct. Nancy. When you hit the button. Getting some mistake, Zumba, you know? And the butt was like, butt calling. But calling. I assume it goes to voicemail. But calling. No assumption, because that's exactly but what it calling. does. You've had phone for a lot, a lot of years, right? Yes. It rings and rings and rings until it goes to voicemail. Correct. So in order to hang up that butt dial, you have to interact with that phone yet again, don't you? Yes. Another butt dial. So if you had six butt it's dials. It's unbelievable. <laughs> There's, they have a straight face. They you come up with a story and they have a straight face. You then have to interact with it every single time to turn must off be, that phone. She must so be a little bit of a narcissist, I man. I suppose. Which makes to have that ability. that phone over the course of 19 minutes. Is that right? Just straight up lie to your I mean, face. I guess I don't have it all right in front of me, but there were also text messages I was sending. So, again, maybe your I said, oh, shoot, I called them, and then I turned calling. it off. But your claim is you don't remember those incessant butt dials and those incessant hang-ups yeah. at all, correct? I, I honestly don't. Dial. Looking at the jury. So she couldn't even that. look at them this time. By the way, you'll read the phone traction show that John Keefe got. I didn't look, but... So that means you would have to interact with that phone 14 times over the course of 19 minutes at the exact time frame that the Commonwealth suggests... 
Sure, sure. Sustained. Um, you can ask that differently, and this will be your last question for today, please. Yes, sure. Your Honor. The period between 1229 and 1250, which is the exact period that you were quote butt dialing John multiple times, that's also the exact period that John O'Keefe was rendered incapacitated. Isn't that right? Sure. That's sustained. We'll start up again tomorrow, okay? Thank you. All right, folks. So I'm going to oh, that's it. That's it for you, babe girl. Baby girl, that's it for you. So that is all we have, guys. What do you think about her body language? What is your impression of her? What is the feeling that you are left with after listening to her testimony? You don't have to say anything about body language. Just post a comment below. Maybe make a post an emoji about how you feel after watching this witness testify. Make a comment, like, and subscribe the video so that I can make more videos like this. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you guys. I'll see you next time, and I can't wait for the rest of her testimony tomorrow. Have a blessed night.